There is a growing portion of TikTokers who are trying to change their race to be Asian and specifically Korean. This, of course, has sparked a huge online debate. So everybody strap in your seatbelts and hit that like button as we get into it. Trans-Koreanism. Yeah, that's the is... thing right now. Um, of course, we're talking about RCTA, ECTA. These are new words to me, Andrew. What do they mean and why is TikTok impacting society? All right, so RCTA means race change to another, ECTA, ethnicity change to another. Uh, this is, I guess, the evolution of the transracial identities where people uh, identify as a different race. Rachel Dazel is, is a famous case of that. But anyways... This is a quote that someone said. Basically, RCTA has the same concept as being transracial. However, these RCTA identifying people believe they are more educated than the previous generation of transracial people because they have actually tried to learn more about the inner culture and the languages and just tried to delve deeper in it. It still doesn't make it okay, though. Is this sort of like being an otaku versus a weeaboo where one of them is more like valid and, you know, you know kendo, you, you speak Japanese versus uh, just being into anime? Yeah, I, I guess the argument is that these RCTA people are like they've tried harder they put in more effort they put in the work to become like an honorary Korean right. so is se. Ali London transracial or is he ECTA RCTA listen guys I'm he's not, the Dave, face of the movement Dave, I don't know I'm not gonna tell him them what they are you know but uh anyways guys I do want to say get before we get into the comment section of course this is a very heated debate on both sides everybody needs to respect each other as people, you know, that's for this sure. Is key. This is key. Yeah. And you even need to respect people who disagree with you. Yes. You got to be respect on all sides, a, guys. This, this is a personal thing. This is not a crime, although it is definitely confusing and very interesting. Uh, it's not like, you know, people, there's a lot worse things going on out on the street. Okay. Listen, guys, man, it's TikTok, guys. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Um, I'm not taking it that serious, but of course, the comment section got super heated, Andrew. Uh, um, but David, so I do want to say we got some points that we're going to talk about at the end that I didn't see in the comment section very often, so stick around for those. Somebody said, what is the difference between race and gender? Of course, people were debating back and forth. Some people were saying, well, the big difference is RCTA, ECTA, they're just fetishizing, and they're just fetishizing the most pop aspects of Japanese and Korean culture that they morph to. So even when they say they learn it better, they're just learning certain slices of the culture better. It's not the upbringing. It's not the deeper mm, culture. It's yeah. the surface level culture. Right, right, right. That's the argument for it. I also, there's also a debate of people are breaking down which one is more of a social construct, gender mm. or race? Now, you always grow up tell, being told race is a social construct, and that's meant for you to not be racist to each other, right? Right, but right. But then does that leave space for people to choose their race? I don't know. Well, this sort of leads us in the, the, uh, a more conservative section, guys. Somebody said, I knew this is where we were headed. We let those liberals drive the social bus, and this is where y'all drove us. And then, of course, uh, other people were saying, oh, look at y'all liberals now. Y'all disagreeing with Ollie London because it touched your sacred cow of racial and cultural identity, but gender was all good, huh? We're going to be marrying our pets soon. Uh, these were obviously all from the uh, conservative side. Uh, moving on, somebody said uh, a lot of Asians in, on the Next Shark Instagram, they were like, dude, you guys, it doesn't matter if you manifest changing your race. You'll never know what it's like to grow up in an Asian household, mm. deal with discrimination, be a minority, deal with racism from COVID, World War II, people viewing you as an enemy, anywhere from major aggressions to microaggressions in the West. If you are a white and you just want to crib the culture now because you, you, you feel like it's not cool to be white to you anymore. So you want to take our identity. Yeah, I think it really is interesting. Uh, and this does bring up a point that I wanted to talk about at the end of like people who grow up in a different place in a different time and they feel like their identity, whether it be man, woman, uh, racial identity is not like cool anymore. And they try to latch no, on to something else. First of all, we've seen this growing up. Like, a lot of people latch onto different identities at different levels. Maybe they fall short of saying, I am this. Right, Malibu's most wanted. Yeah. What is that whole concept? Like, That's like a result of Tupac being so popular, we, and everybody wanted to be hood bro, because of Tupac, right? We, we grew up in the 90s and 2000s. Everybody wanted to be black, right? That's what everybody said, but... but not that many people would say, yeah. I am black. Right, I, I would say, black. would you say that the dynamic is that privilege became cliche or privilege became uncool? Because somebody said, why would you want to be a minority, which is like a 1.5 or a second class citizen, when you're already born white, which is a first class citizen in America? Why would you go down in the chain of the hierarchy? Because what? it's not cool to be 
you know, the privileged Whoa. old money now. Why man. would you want to choose Asian? If of all the races, I'm choosing gorgeous, light skinned black guy. Well, as look, my the, race. the truth is, a lot of <laughs> Asians, man, and the I mean, it's different. But like some, of, a lot of them would choose white because they're trying to move up. To yeah. be the first, you had to get the first class so, American so citizen. So Ali London is guys. Asian, and then you get some Asians get to be white. Ooh, so what you if, swap. What if Ali London identifies as an Asian who wants to be white yeah. instead of a white that wants to be yeah. Asian? I who mean, knows, this, David, this has been a joke in culture. Obviously, Dave Chappelle's uh, racial draft. Uh, growing up in the '90s, you would hear the words of like a white guy wax like a black guy and all this. Like there are uh, even white Rastas. You'd always be like, yo, what are these white yeah, Rastas? Yeah, I mean, these jokes been around for like literally 30, Decade. 40 years. I mean, it, it's been around. It's been happening. Somebody said, we've won, but at what cost? This guy was basically saying, I'm liberal. We're liberal guys. I get it. That's all good. Which, But I don't know. I'm getting kind of worried. Mm. Who knows, man? Um, of course, Andrew, this uh, from the adopted community, they don't like the fact that the word transracial, which is was typically five years ago or 10 years ago, used only exclusively uh. in the adoption community as more of a understanding like people that have been adopted by other cultures, like Asian girls that have been adopted by white families, that's transracial adoption. They feel like the word has been taken from the adoption community. Oh, transracial because they are of a different race growing up in a different ethnicity's family. Okay, that's right. interesting. I, I actually, I didn't know that that it, it, it originates from the yeah. adoption I'm world. not gonna lie though. I, I'm not saying what, you know, everything's bad that does anything bad to anybody or anybody, that, but like, this version of transracialism to a normie person is going to immediately click more than the adoptive term. Oh, it's more explosive. Yeah. 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 Well, it's just more easily identifiable, I guess in 2023, somebody said I've been identifying as super rich lately, but I haven't uh, received my money. <laughs> Trans financial. Yeah. Somebody said, good, the dumber everybody else is and worrying about dumb things like this, the easier it is for me to make money, take your money and dominate. Um, yeah, that's an interesting... Okay, Andrew Tate. Yeah. Somebody said, is this something in the water? Is there a brain-eating amoeba in 2023? David, what's this comment about postmodernism? Well, uh, PK actually was a friend of ours said, what in the world is happening? And somebody said, this is just French postmodernist thrash. Long story short, guys, um... There was, uh, you know, regular philosophy, then there was modernism, and then in the 1970s in France, in Paris, Andrew, there was postmodernism theory, and uh, long story short, postmodernism refers to the state of culture where media is produced in such staggering quantities, it has crossed the boundaries into reality itself, and hyper-reality prevails. Basically, modernism was more like focusing on answers to everything, and that was like the narrative is like, we're just going to figure out the truth to everything. Postmodernism is like, the truth is all relative. There is no truth. Ah, yeah, yeah I've heard that. No real truths. Yeah. So yeah, listen, guys, you guys look more into it. I'm sure some of you guys out there are philosophy majors. You guys know a lot more uh, than we do. Uh, uh, Very uh, interesting, uh. though. I watched a few YouTube videos on it. Somebody said, uh, yeah, if you want to be Asian, prepare for emotional damage because we've received that every day of our lives. And you better learn our language at least 40 hours a week. Your previous race card is null and void. And you better eat fish sauce. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, yeah, call me if you ever need some slippers thrown at your head for an authentic transitioning experience. And somebody said, That's this is fun. so weird to see this as a mixed Asian person. Mm. Yeah, like we said, um, Andrew, do you think Asians are right or wrong? Because some people have some really strong opinions on this, right? Because th let's be honest, they are more white tickers, TikTokers trying to transition to, to Asians. Yeah. Uh, who would have thought, David, that growing up, people would actually really try to be Asian? Now they're trying to be Asians have been cool enough that some white people want to be Asian. You mean you mean Japanese and Koreans have gotten cool yeah, enough? Yeah, yeah, Japanese and Koreans got cool enough. Uh but yeah, I so I think, man, it's a really funny conversation, obviously, and there's tons of jokes that come out of it. Um, but I guess like for me, I guess my questions are, you know, what if someone is like two percent of another ethnicity? Like, let's say. Let's just say this is not true. It didn't show up on our DNA test. But let's just say I happen to be like, we happen to be 2% like Nigerian. Is that enough for us to claim being black? Could we say we're black now at all? Right. Or it, is it more based off the societal perception or even yeah. just like, it was just weird. It's or, like the, the visual manifestation yeah. of your phenotype. Or because the facially, DNA there's helix, no right? one in the world that would ever think I'm black. 
So there's no way I can identify as black, even if right. I'm like 5% black. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. So I guess like, at what point is it? Because I think for a lot of mixed people, right, that are like four different ethnicities, which there are people out there like that, obviously. Like, do they get to identify and just switch throughout the week? I remember of which one ethnicity? time, Andrew, Mike Bibby went to like the BET Awards or something like that. And, and like, they didn't, somebody in the crowd, like a journalist didn't do their homework and they misidentified Mike Bibby as, as not black. Right. And Mike Bibby was like, yeah, I'm black. Yeah. And then you have to just, well, you have to just take it because yeah, here's you a picture of Mike Bibby. If you guys don't know. Yeah. You have to take his word for it. Yeah. He is black. He is black. Um, um, somebody said, yeah, this is so bizarre and completely wrong, but Asians have been trying to look white and copying white features for years now. And they're doing surgeries, lens, wigs, uh, wigs, bleaching, whitening products. So this is kind of hypocritical as it gets. So this is the same thing, basically. Another guy said, uh, Asian people have been trying to look white for centuries now. So I don't know if we can really call them out for trying to look like us. Uh, all right. So I think that trying to take on the aesthetic of somebody is quite different. Even like there's a whole Chicano scene in Japan where in Thailand where they dress up like uh, cholos. cholos, right? But they don't, they wouldn't tell you that they're cholos. They're not like, yeah, we think we are Cholos. We are Mexican. Yeah. They wouldn't say that. And right. that just like white, like just like Asians who act white or try to be accepted by white people, saying you are actually a white person is different than just like appearing and taking on some of the traits, I guess. Uh -huh. Somebody said, I'm Chinese. I had a Chinese friend who was a girl and she growing up in her teenage years, fake race being uh, Korean or Japanese, but she was just Chinese. So, yeah, so how so, bad is that? Because it's between Korean and Chinese and Japanese, which are, like, pretty close together. Right, you, you could get away with it. Yeah, so I'm saying, I guess, like, how wrong is she? Like we said, guys, I think the line gets really blurry, and, you know, I don't know, there's so many new terms, and there's so many new discussions. So this, somebody said, uh, I'm black American. Welcome to the wide-scale pop cultural monetization of ethnicity and culture while simultaneously mocking and restricting access to the people of the ethnicity and the culture that is being monetized as a black person. I know what this feels like. Mm, yeah, that's true, because black culture or culture spearheaded by black people has have has always been very popular for the past, like, however many decades. Right, the Kardashians right? get, uh, you know, accused of that a lot, right? Yeah, getting yeah. grades or getting So, D David, looks. do you feel like, I feel like that it's really fueled by, like, this, this idea of a cultural appropriation because nobody wants to have their culture appropriate and everybody wants to gatekeep and be like, I'm the gatekeeper. I call it out. Who's Asian? Who's Korean? Who's Chinese? Who's blah, blah, blah? Who's Filipino? Right. You know, I'm, I'm the authority, even though there is technically no authority. And right. one but thing, people feel like, oh, well, I have the most generalized, like normative yeah. view, right? Yeah. And one thing that I do think is kind of funny is that throughout a life, everybody's always had this honorary Asian card. Right, you'd give it to your friend who was like dating. Well, every, every group of Asians back in Seattle or the Bay Area, everybody That's got dating that Dating an Asian person who kind of learned the language, they're down with the culture. They're every every, every group honorary. of Asian friends or Asian squads, they got that one, yeah. they got that or, one friend or, in or there. Or the Asian dude or the Latino dude who marries into the black family. It's like, you're honorary. You're, you're not right. black, but you're honorary. So you're saying the honorary status is better than somebody literally trying to claim the actual status. It is weird to claim it. It's the last weird. comment was, man, you're just born whatever you're born. Deal with it, guys. <laughs> Deal with it. You're just born whatever you're born. Um, Andrew, let's just get into our takeaways, man. I mean, what do you think? Th this debate could rage on literally in circles for hours and hours. I mean, I think for me in 2023, I'm kind of just like good with whatever. Like, you know... It, it, when you go into an Asian household with the Eastern culture, you got to take off your shoes. You can't put your chopsticks in your rice like it's incense, right? The, there's just some cultural things that you just cannot do. You, it's very, very difficult to talk back to the parents. Like, it's just not allowed. These are things that are generally, for the most part, very held uh, high, in high esteem in the Asian culture. Mm. So I would want people to respect that when we're in the Asian society. You know what I mean? Like an Asian household is like a mini microcosm right, right, of an right, Asian right, society, right, right. right? But when we're out in the West, if we are assuming that, let's just say it's French postmodernism or it's like ultra late stage capitalism or it's neoliberalism or neo-individualism, whatever you want to call it. If that's the, the, the scheme that we're running out here, then of course everybody has to accept it. Right. Right? Not, you, you can, we cannot pick and choose if we're all agreeing that this is how things are going 
in the West. So you're saying these RCTA people, you would urge them not to try to do this in Asia, but if they're in America and want to play this game, then go I'm for it. I'm more about operating off the rules of whatever. Andrew, we play in FIBA ball. We can knock yeah. the ball that's spinning around the rim. If we in the NBA, that's a goaltend. All right. That's yeah. my perspective where I'm like, hey, guys, who am I to dictate? Like, if we're going by 1970s French postmodernism here, I guess let's, I'm going to let you it know, rock. Anybody can claim whatever they want, but it doesn't mean that everybody else has to treat them like that. Right. And you That's can't true, control too. other people's lives. The whole point is that you can live your life as an individual and nobody should mess with you as far as no one should hurt you and be aggressive and disrespect you, but they don't have to treat you exactly how you want to be treated because you can't control other people. But all you can ask for, I think, is the baseline is respect. So, uh, uh, it is definitely a weird thing, man. It definitely looks weird and sounds weird. Dude, people just, <laughs> yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments but section again, below. Guys, Keep it civil, guys. Do you think that Ollie London being the face of this recta ecta thing, it, it really makes it look ridiculous because yeah. he's ridiculous? Yeah, yeah. But, but I, maybe there's, dude, Andrew, think about it. In the future, the technologies are going to become so advanced, somebody literally like visually is going to be able to become another race. Yes. No, exactly. Guys, the, the, the technology is not there no, yet. There's going to be a white girl who looks an Asian enough and he speaks the language and she's going to embed herself maybe in Asia and even trick people at some point. What is, it's what possible. about Bjork? Think about Bjork, man, because you know, a lot of people in Greenland and Iceland, they have some of those Inuit Eskimo Dave, bloodlines. David, I identify as a blue eyed, beautiful, light skinned man like Jeremy Meeks. I would like to be treated as such. And you know what? <laughs> but you, no one's going to treat do, me that do way. Do you identify as you speaking Spanish too? I, I maybe I identify as a, a Spanish person that, but I just don't speak Spanish. Ooh, How about that? Right. I like to, like an, you know, like a, yeah, like an Americanized Puerto Rican. I like it. I'm so into it, but no one's going to treat me that way. Hey man, I respect it though. <laughs> Yeah, don't, let us know don't what you think me. in the comment section no. below, guys. I think it just all depends on your perspective. I do not think there's right or wrong, even though, of course, people in the comment section were trying to tell each other that they were right or wrong. Let us know what you think. Keep it civil. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.